and welcome to Friday's Masterclass edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where uh, one of Mark or me gets to try the uh, Times Cryptic crossword and solve it live for you. Uh, I just remembered to put the right glasses on, which I'm pleased about. That will help me. Um, I've checked the snitch rating today. The snitch rating, for those of you who, who don't know, is sort of an unofficial measure of the difficulty of the Times puzzle, which is normally at its most difficult on a Friday. Now, today it's not as hard as usual, so it might be reasonably tractable. So if you are new to solving cryptic crosswords, maybe spend a bit of extra time on this one because it's probably going to be a good learning opportunity. Um, now, before we, we start, just um, uh, a, a brief plug, if I may, uh, for our Patreon where we have just released Mark's solve of the Times Club Monthly Special, which is, if we go over here, I think it's under Specialist. Um, see the listener. Oh, see, I don't even know where it is. Is it, is it one of these down here? I should know, shouldn't I? Or maybe it's just under Cryptic. Uh, uh, now, now I'm intrigued. I want to know where it is. I did used to solve it, um, but then I... Um, I got out of the habit because it took me, you know, it does take a long time. It's a proper effort if you want to solve it. Let's have a look. Not started in progress. Mephisto. It's not the Mephisto. Maybe because it only comes out once. Ah, there it is. There you go. So um, the monthly club special. You can see it on the screen there. And Mark does this every month over on Patreon. And I have to say the solve, uh, I think he's just solved Dunes, which is the video we've just released. It is uh, virtuosic. It is ludicrous. Um, it's frankly a bit offensive how clever um, the guy is. Um, so I, I commend that to you if you want to see some truly outstanding cryptic crossword solving. Um, but right, we're about to kick off into this. So a reminder, if you are new to cryptic crosswords, what do you need to know? You need to know basically two things. The first thing to solve any cryptic crossword clue there's always a definition in the clue, like a quick crossword definition. So if we can read the clue correctly, we could view it almost as a quick crossword. That quick crossword clue in any part of any clue is almost always at the start or the end. Sometimes the whole clue can be the, can be the, the definition, but not, not often. It's almost always at the start or the end of the clue. The other big tip is that view the words in a cryptic crossword um, as whether they are short synonym <laughs> I mean there is no word synonymable but if you what I'm trying to get at there is come up with a bank in your brain of short synonyms for words and that will help you um, to piece together these crosswords so anyway let, that's that's a brief introduction let's see if we've got the window the right size I think we have let's get cracking so friend ringing a seabird i'm so again i haven't finished reading the clue yet but i i know some seabirds that are sh short numbers of letters i'm thinking the turn the urn e-r-n-e -E, which i think is a sea eagle but i might be wrong uh, the orc all, all of these are in my mind gull 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 a little bit but gull doesn't naturally fit into the middle of a word uh, and if you look at how how this this the start of this this clue is phrased friend ringing a seabird so what that clue is actually saying is find a short synonym for the word friend well i'm thinking pal immediately i'm going to surround that it's that that word is going to ring it's going to surround a word for a seabird so maybe i'm thinking paternal or something like that and then i don't even have to, well i have now read the end of the clue but i've literally solved that if you if you're experienced with cryptic crosswords that is a write-in believe it or not because we have we've sort of discerned how it works we put a turn so this a in the clue is very important imagine that wasn't there then the clue would be wrong wouldn't it because we'd have friend the word pal surrounding just a seabird now you can't for a seabird there you can't put a turn so that a is necessary for the word play and you'll find this with any good cryptic crossword and you'll find it not respected in any bad cryptic crossword. A good cryptic crossword has nothing superfluous in it. So this A is there for a reason because it is exactly that A there. It's not this A because if PAL was surrounding 
turn A, the clue should read friend ringing seabird A, taking protective interest, which doesn't make sense. Um, now let's try and do one down. So stalk, hmm, I'm not, I haven't got anything yet. My brain's not giving me a, but then the word learner crops up. Now again, what is the shortest form of synonym? Well, it's an abbreviation and learner, Certainly, if you're from the UK, you'll be familiar with learner drivers having L plates on their vehicles. So L is almost always, uh, if you see learner, it's almost always L. Um, and a reminder, I do this every week, but you can't just make up um, abbreviations. They have to be justified by the dictionary. So I have my electronic version of Chambers Dictionary and Thesaurus. Some of you have asked about this. They, um, uh, this is no longer actually made, so I had to get this off uh, off eBay. It's a, an old CD-ROM. Uh, if you can get hold of one, get hold of it. It's fantastic because it's well, it's it's the dictionary that's used by the Times, which is Chambers. I mean, this this version of Chambers that's used on this CD-ROM is very slightly out of date now, but it's still fantastically useful, and it allows you to do full text searches. So if I wanted to know everything, you know everything in this dictionary with the word turn in it for example i can type it in go to full text and you can see all sorts of things cropping up who knew who knew that the pictani pictani is a, is a walter scott's name for a turn you know this this is the sort of power that the uh, that the electronics gives you now i'm not going to use electronics at all to solve the times today i'm just going to use it to just to once I've solved clues to explain how they work if I need to. And you can see under L there, we've got learner as in learner driver. So L, I'm expecting to appear somewhere in this clue. Learner, seen among Vegas rollers after training. Well, mm, training, I always think, well, I don't always think, I've learned to think, is, is quite often physical education or PE. So how about putting E there? Now, Vegas rollers... I'm thinking they might be dice. Now this is a problem. Well, it's not really a problem. It would be a problem if this was, if, if this, if there was no checking letters, because I think the word, the word I'm looking for, I feel here, is a word like pell dice or ped lice. I don't know that as a word at all. Ped, stalk, ped. But hopefully, I might if I can if I can get these checking letters, I might be able to justify how this works. Right, two down. Let's try that. Go off to climb, finding rocky height. Well, there's a short synonym for a rocky height, which is a tor, T-O-R, Glastonbury tor. You might have heard of, uh, which is basically a hill. There you go, a rocky height. So if this isn't somehow involved in this answer beginning with T, I will be surprised. Uh, if something, if food goes off, it rots. So Go off, singular, climbs, it's a down clue. So the word climb, if a word climbs, it is reversing. Now climb can only be used as a reversal indicator in a down clue, because if an across clue climbs, it, it would go up the grid, wouldn't it? It wouldn't reverse. So be aware that words like climb mean reversal, but only in down clues. Let's try three down. Think again, reconsider, I'm immediately thinking. About, well, about can be re, if something is re something, it's about it. Wayward sun consumed by drink. Sire is, it? yes, okay, it is. It's uh, wayward sun. It's a nice phrase, isn't it? But but what it's actually telling you to do is to anagram the word sun to make those letters wayward. And if we put that in the drink of cider, we get reconsider, which is going to be the answer. So. Again, not too difficult once we have the R at the start and we read the first two words of the clue. So let's try this again. A pair of spectacles. So I haven't read the rest of the clue yet. I'm deliberately taking my eyes away from it. But a pair of spectacles. What's the A doing there? Why, if, 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 if the definition in this clue is a pair of spectacles, why couldn't it just have been pair of spectacles? So I suspect that a pair of spectacles is part of the wordplay. And a pair of spectacles, sometimes in the cryptic crossword set as mind, is glasses. You know, if you if you you know if you do that with your you're making two O's, aren't you? So I'm wondering 
I should be able to get this immediately, and I haven't got it wrapped in pink paper. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> okay, so it, 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 I was right in my thinking, but wrong in what I thought was going to happen next. So the pair of spectacles, our double O, is wrapped in pink paper. Well, what could that be? And for those of you uh, who enjoy the financial press, you'll be familiar with the Financial Times, the FT. So we put double O in FT, we get a foot. And if, um, if something's in train, it's a foot, it's happening, isn't it? So it's, very, it's a clever clue, this, because it feels, you know, at first blush, like you might be looking for a, the synonym of a, the noun train but you're not you need to it means you know the game is afoot the game is in train it's it's ongoing right now should we should we have a go at this now bear in mind i did think this might be a d so i'm thinking director director general is what i'm thinking and that, that's i mean that's ridiculously lucky and it's right isn't it auntie is colloquially referring to the bbc and the, uh, the person who runs the BBC is called the Director General. So I'm sure this is right. I just have to understand the wordplay. Uh, precise or vague? Right. It's lovely, actually, isn't it? So if something is precise, it's direct. And then or is just the or in the answer. And if something is vague, it's a bit general. So direct or general gives us, gives us the answer. And that's... Oh, pedicle. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> oh, dear, 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 dear. I am so sorry. I do know the word pedicle. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. <laughs> okay, I was thinking ped lice. I don't know that word. Well, you're right, I don't. But pedicle. <laughs> oh, dear. You've all had a laugh at my expense. Sorry. Um, and I'm not changing that. So let's, in fact, let, let's look it up. I, I'm sure that's right. So pedicle. Ah, not pedicap. Pedicle. My, my E. When I press my E at the moment, it produces some number of e's that may not be one i don't know why that is it's very annoying but there you go pedicle the short stalk so that was right now i could look here but actually i quite like the look of this one with a g as its second letter so let's have a look here or gilbert and sullivan involve posh right let's stop there posh this is one of these words that comes up in cryptic crosswords which has the most strange short synonym or abbreviation and that abbreviation is u believe it or not because if we look in the dictionary under the letter u we will see it explained um it's not going to be explained there let's go to the next version of u no still not still not burmese title of respect here here we go u if something is u as an adjective it is found among the upper classes socially acceptable upper class so posh and you are very, uh, well, are synonymous. Theatrical part in Gilbert and Sullivan. Showing unfair condition. Hmm. I haven't got this. Uh, uh, showing unfair condition. I'm wondering if it's referring to your hair colour, actually, because there's a question mark at the end, which means we have to think about this cryptically. I don't know. I haven't got a clue, I'm afraid. I don't know that one. Let's try. Well, should we? No, let's try five across. Caught by light, suggesting stop. There's curve in the work in the road. OK, well. Uh, again, knowing as I do that there are lots of very familiar words that are often abbreviated in cryptic crosswords. The word court immediately makes me think of C from, from cricket scoring, believe it or not. That's where that comes from. So, so if that's true, what is the definition in this, in this clue? It's not the start of the clue. If, if this court stands for C, the definition is going to be at the end. So it's going to be something like in road or curve in the road. Well, can you think of a curve in the road that begins with C? And I can, it's the word camber. And a, a traffic light suggesting stop is the amber light. So C amber gives us camber. So not really that difficult once we understand how the clue has to be read. Six down, probably aunt or Anna or, oh, Anna Karenina. Right, golly. Okay, it is Anna, um, Anna Karenina. Um, what is this about? 12 pies. 
Well, I think this, the Anna, I want to say Anna is a, an old coin. That was worth 12 pies, perhaps, but I, I'm not sure that that's right. I mean, I'm not changing that that answer is Anna Karenina. So let us, um, let's have a look. There we go. A former coin, one sixteenth of a rupee. So was a pie equal to some strange fraction of a rupee then? Let's have a look. Pie has millions of definitions. Not millions, but several. There we go. I mean, that's, that's so ludicrous. It's a, okay, so it was a twelfth of an anna. There we go. I mean, it's, it couldn't be stated more starkly. But, you know, if you're, if you, I mean, I, I'm fortunate that I knew that, that anna had a strange meaning. And I am familiar pie has a lot of meanings. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's I mean, the, the Karenina part of that is, is very much the, the giveaway, isn't it? Seven down. Right, okay, let's stop it. So seven down, I've read the first three words, okay? And my brain is saying, this is an anagram. I don't, I can't really explain to you why, except that the more of these you do, the more use your brain will get, or the more practiced your brain will get at looking at words and thinking, why has the constructor used those specific letters? Those letters look weird. And only dry bran here, to me, just feels like a weird collection of letters. And then if we go on to the clue, only dry, to be mixed. Okay, so it is an anagram. And uh, and then, right, there, so we're looking for a literary character. I haven't got it yet. Baron somebody? Um, ah, don't, I don't know that I know this. Oh, is it Byron? Oh, no, is it Byron? Lord By Byron? Hang on. I don't know who it is. I, haven't, I don't know. Byron. I'm not sure. As, uh, but we hopefully, again, with the checking letters, we'll be able to get it. Let's have a look at eight down. Wedged beneath bank. Well, the word bank, you might be thinking of a river bank. But if I bank on somebody, I rely on them. So another another short synonym. This is all, all my brain is doing, is thinking short synonyms. And bank briefly, well, that's just a brief form of the word rely. We'll chop off the last letter. That will give us the word bank briefly. So this seems to suggest we need rel and we need a word for wedged. And that's going to sit beneath this word rely with its end cut off. Cuts slacks off. Oh. Relaxes. Right. Okay, so I was wrong about, I was, I was a bit wrong about how to read the clue. So the word wedged here is being, or wedged beneath, that is all telling you, you know, those two words are saying that put beneath, if I, if I read it as put beneath, put beneath a short word for bank, a word that means cuts. Now the word axes means cuts. And if I do that, you can get a, a word that means slacks off. So wedged, you, you know, my, I wanted to read, I wanted a short synonym for wedged to sit beneath the bank, but actually the constructors use wedged beneath. Now you might say, that's superfluous, Simon. Why, why is wedged there? Because beneath would, be, would do just the job. That is a fair point. But um, I think the, the, the constructor gets away with that. It's a bit of flavoring added to the, indicator there and we get an x at the end of 13 across wildcat I'm thinking links um yes okay so this is a reference to golf which is very appropriate given they've got the scottish open going on at the moment the open at royal liverpool hoy lake uh, going on next week where i played my first varsity match a few years ago now um and uh, anyway uh, it's redolent of different times. Um, a wildcat is a lynx, L-Y-N-X. And a golf course lynx is L-I-N-K-S. But this is a homophone. So if we say the word lynx as in the golf course, it sounds exactly the same as lynx as in the cat. Well, you might say, well, 
um, if we didn't have this, well, actually, there, there is no ambiguity here because one is five letters, one is four letters long. But we can also use the clue to know which which of the two answers we must enter because it's clearly the course by the sea that is being reported. Reported means heard, doesn't it? So that that's it's the word reported. You might hear by the sounds of it. It's often used in cryptic crosswords to indicate a homophone. OK, so this is not um, Byron. Barney, Barney. No, Barney would have an E in it, wouldn't it? But, um, Barry? I can't think of any literary characters called Barry. Pretty sure I can't anyway. All right, that's going to be an intriguing one. Let's, all right, let's go and use these starting letters then. Oh, there's a, is there a break in the clue? So this is 7-3, a, a coconut shy is what I'm thinking now. I haven't read the clue yet. Clown, or Coco the Clown. That's, so this is going to be coconut shy. Greek character. Whenever you see Greek character, don't think Achilles. Don't think, you know, <laughs> this is not what it's going to be. A Greek character is saying a Greek letter from the Greek alphabet. And there are loads of short Greek letters that are incredibly useful, like nu, N-U, which is a Greek letter. That's after mu, which is also another of these very useful ones. So let's have a look at this. Mu. Mu. Ah, no, that's not the word or the letter. There we go. Um, so we've got coconut. Uh, if you work... Uh, sorry, to work hard in cooking medium. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, I was about to put in coconut shy and I was thinking, how does the end of this clue work? It's not coconut shy, it's coconut oil. And that's if you work hard, you toil. And in a cooking medium is um, something you cook in, which is coconut oil. So it's quite, I like the way this is phrasing because work hard in cooking medium. Yeah, I mean, um, I was thinking maybe the word cooking medium was sort of saying cooking over a medium heat. Um, but anyway, this is clearly the answer and we are good to go. Look, should we try 15 across now? Priest Eli, I'm thinking, is featured in Times, championing, championing exclusive group, elitist. Yeah, interesting. OK, this is elitist. Uh, Eli, I think, was a biblical priest. So Eli comes up a lot. I mean, priest actually can be P as well. Let's let me just show you that. So you do see priest. It can, I'm pretty sure, pastor. But there it is, priest. So it can be P, but m most often actually it is Eli. <laughs> and then is is this is here is featured in Times. Well, Times here is TT. Now. I'm just going to check whether TT does mean time. No, it doesn't. I didn't think it did. I think what this is saying now, if T is a valid abbreviation for uh, for time. So I know some constructors, some editors have a problem with with what this constructor has done here. I don't have a problem with it, but some do. So what, what I think the constructor is doing is saying that T is a valid abbreviation for time. If I can now find it, which I don't seem to be able to. Where is it? Must be here somewhere. Def oh, there we go. Symbol time. Um, so times. Where is the clue here? Is is some multiple number of t's? It's at least two t's, isn't it? So we've got Eli and then is in two t's, which are times. Now the reason some editors don't like it is they say that times as a plural has no abbreviation. So to claim that this is the plural of two abbreviations of time is a little bit a little bit tricky, but championing elite exclusive group is definitely elitist. So we, we're, we're on the right lines with this. Now, vital energy, chi, I'm just going to write that in. So that's that is what that is deployed by Lothario or Lothario. Uh, might he ask for your hand? Um, it looks like it's an anagram of Lothario. I'm not sure, actually, though. 
Might he ask for your hand? Oh no. So these three down clues have really kiboshed me here. Let's try 16 down. Speculator. Initially tense. Gold. Pinched in robbery. Speculator. I want to say theorist. Um, and well, gold is an interesting one. Whenever you see an element from the periodic table, you are expected to know its abbreviation. Now you won't get, you know, you won't get some very strange ones, but things like gold being AU, you'll be expected to know. But gold is also a tincture in heraldry, um, which can be ore. Let me show you that. There we go, the tincture gold from heraldry. So that would seem to suggest that I'm going to put theorist in and try and justify it. Heist, I can see now, now I say that. So it is right. So it's initially tense, that's saying the first, the initial letter of the, the word tense. Now that's quite interesting as well, because as we were just doing the abbreviations for T, I was reminded that one of the valid abbreviations for T, I'm pretty sure, is tense. I might be I might be misleading you here, but I'm pretty sure there, tense. So this initially tense is drawing, a, you know, it's not strictly necessary. It's justified by the dictionary without saying we need the initial letter of the word tense. Um, but tense and the, the times crossword, tense in the listener, which is the harder, you know, it's the really hard weekly puzzle. You definitely wouldn't use initially. You wouldn't need, you don't need it. But in the Times, they clearly think that for people to know that T is a valid abbreviation for tense is sort of slightly beyond the beyond the pale. So, uh, so, so we so that the initially here is justified, and then we've got gold O R pinched in the robbery, which is the heist, and for theorist with the speculator. So at least we've got that one in. Eighteen. Make call to the writer in linguistics unit. Oh, there are loads of things like phonemes, aren't they? That are li linguist. Oh, it probably is phoneme, in fact. Yeah. Okay. That's just lucky. I think there are other linguistic units that are much less known to me. If you make a call to someone, you phone them to the writer. Well, the writer of the clue is me. So the constructor is referring to himself or herself there. So make call to the writer, phone me, um, and, that, and, and the linguistics unit is a phoneme. Let's try 18 down. Black dog. Is that... Black dog, I think, is a bad mood, isn't it? So I'm, I was thinking pet, actually. Coats produce... Or, no, pro, coats produce shine. And that sounds like a word like buff or rub. It's the local food. Pub, 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 it's pub something, I think. Pub grub or something. So I'm going to put pub grub in. I quite like that as an expression. I don't understand why. It, a black dog, is that a pug? No. Oh, black can be B. God, yeah, that's very cleverly worded. Black dog coats produce. Right, I understand how this works. I'm just intrigued now. Is it black? Isn't black dog? No. Am I just going mad, or is it a word for a bad, or is it a phrase for a bad mood? Yeah, no, it is. There you go. Black dog with the depression or melancholy. Okay, but the, the way this works is not is not the way I first thought. The way this works is B is a valid abbreviation for black. And then dog is coating the bee, and the dog is a pug. So pug cro uh, um, coats or surrounds the bee. That gives us pub G. And then if you produce shine something, you rub it. So that gives us pub grub, which is food in your local, your local being the local pub. You say, let's go down to the local. Um, now, false god, Baal, I'm thinking, lacking originality not new yes okay so banal is a word um which means lacking originality take the n out because n is a valid abbreviation for new and you get baal which is a false god cairo 
Oh, Chi Chiropodis? Chirop oh, I was thinking pedicurist or something. Sh Cairo. Deployed by Lothario. Still haven't got that. Genius is on test cricket ground. I like, I like the clue. I mean, I tell you what, oh, is, is it, no, that is brilliant. If that's, no, no, it's not right. I thought for a moment that it might be an anagram of is on test cricket. which would be magnificent it is that is 15 letters and the why why do i say let's talk about anagrams briefly so when words are required to be anagrammed encrypted crosswords there has to be an indicator in the clue there has to be a word in the clue or a phrase that is telling you to anagram you, you can't just find 15 letters so i can't just look at this clue and say is on test cricket is 15 letters the answer is 15 letters therefore it must be an anagram there has to be a word that tells you to mix up those letters and the brilliant thing about this clue is well it might be the brilliant thing i haven't solved it but it is is the word ground because it's so easy to read cricket ground as a phrase and you're thinking lords the oval that's what i was thinking old trafford headingly um but here ground is the past tense of grind and if you grind something you mill it you definitely destroy it don't you so so if you ground the letters of is on test cricket you would anagram them so i think this might be an this might be an anagram so i think it's the name of a g oh rocket scientist oh that is brilliant that is absolutely brilliant i'm amazed i've never seen that clue before that's so brilliant that it, it you sort of feel it must be an, a, a standard clue of, that's known throughout the world as just being utterly brilliant. Genius is on, that is fantastic. That is a fantastic clue. My goodness me. Um, right, let's try and get this one. Right, one earning crust from bread baker. Uh, engages right. So a baker earns earns a living from bread um, and that engages that takes in an abbreviation for the word right that's r and a barker is a word for a tout look i got the double e there naughty naughty e key um, so this is it's not an anagram of lothario is it vital energy chi deployed by lothario romancer Chiromancer, that rings a bell. Wow, I don't know. I don't know what that means, <laughs> um, but I think I have. I have seen the word before. Um, so I'm not changing it. So why don't we look it up while we're here? I, and I won't change it. And I will get the puzzle wrong if this is um, Chiromancer. Is that is that in there somewhere? Chiromancy is fortune telling oh okay so it so it's it's palm palmistry is it some sort sort of you know fortune telling i can't actually see chiromancer but the fact that chiromancy is in there means chiromancer must be someone who performs chiromancy um so i'm happy with that might he ask for your hand it's a clever clue actually because it sounds like somebody's asking for your hand in marriage that's exactly what i thought when i read it especially with the reference to the Lothario, but the Romancer is a nice synonym there. 24 down. Olympian goddess Hebe in seven gated city without... Well, Thebes, I think, had seven gates, didn't it? And if that doesn't have its walls, the constructor, the question mark there is, is, is the constructor knows that's taking liberties because words don't really have walls. But, but walls are sort of the surroundings, aren't they? So let's cut the T and the S off the word Thebes, off the city Thebes, and we just get Hebe, and Hebe was a goddess. Um, so now let's have a look at 12. Say Blixen, Pontopidon, Pontopidon, and Kierkegaard or 27s of a sort I, I just 
don't know what that means. <laughs> let, let, let me be honest. I've got absolutely no clue what that's talking about. Um, adventurous heroine in charge bringing beer around. Well, the most probably the most famous heroine. I mean, is Alice, in, as in Alice in Wonderland, the most famous heroine? Perhaps she is. Um, and in charge is IC. That's a common abbreviation. And if we bring a short synonym for beer around the IC, well, ale is a very lovely short synonym, isn't it? And we get Alice, the adventurous heroine. Adventurous here is, is absolutely opposite as well, because, you know, uh, Alice's adventures in Wonderland. Let's try 28. Here goes Oscar. Now, let me just pause there because it's useful to be familiar with the international radio code words and things like Oscar. Let's go to Oscar again. Uh, let's go O. Uh, well, no, no, in fact, let's just type in Oscar. In international radio communication, the code word for the letter O couldn't be more explicit. So it'd be very surprising if this clue doesn't have O in it. Here goes O, with child say heading west. Here goes Geronimo. I'd love it if it was Geronimo. Geronimo. One E. Uh, now, Oscar. Minor is a child. That's, that's it. That's lovely, isn't it? <laughs> I love that clue. Because it's, it's an absolute lesson in can you read the clue correctly? And if you read it as here goes Oscar with child say heading west, it's very hard to discern that the definition is here goes. But when you read it correctly, if you think of a synonym for here goes, I immediately think of thought of Geronimo. And then Oscar is this O here, and a child is a minor, and say it's, it's EG. And that all goes west as in reverses. It's an across clue, so going west means reverse it. What is this? Oh, Idi, Idi Armin. Ah, whoops. Um, Ugandan dictator's name held in disdain regularly. Yes, okay, so if you see words like regularly or evenly or oddly, it's often saying take the regularly occurring letters, the even letters, the odd letters out of a string. And if you look at disdain and you take the regular letters, so take the even numbered letters, you take the I, the D and the I, and the Ugandan dictator's name is Idi, as in Idi Army, obviously. Um, 20 down. Carlisle so thought to contain kingdom. Well, that's okay. So th there's always one of these. It's funny that this has come up immediately after Idi, which is another sort of classic piece of crossword ease. Um, but Carlisle so thought, it, it just looks odd to me. And I could sense there was something odd about it, but I wasn't sure what it was. But the Kingdom of Lesotho is spelt out, look, inside Carlisle So Thought, L-E-S-O-T-H-O. There's almost always one of these in every Times crossword. Again, there has to be an indicator to tell you that the answer is contained within the clue. And here, it's there, to contain. So these letters contain the kingdom that we're looking for. Now, look at this. This is a nasty one, isn't it? Well, we have got an O in 14 down. Slowing down, it's going to be something like diminuendo or something. Where article blocks crumbling dirt road. Oh, goodness, it is something like that. Um, it's a musical term for slowing down. And we've got... A crumbling dirt road is an anagram of dirt road. Um, which we need to put an article in. I'm thinking that the article is probably an, as in uh, a version of the indefinite article A. Writ, writ, maybe it's writ, writ, ritardando or something. Not sure if I've got the anagram fodder right there. Let's have a look. Dirt. I have got the anagram fodder. I don't know this word. Retardando. It seems like it might be, right? Um, what's this one? Uh, what? 27s of a th barkers. Oh, it's dogs, is it? Or 27s of a thought. 27s are barkers. Sounds like it's some sort of dogs. 
Say Blixen. Ponto Pidden. Why is oh, I can't fit dogs in here? Oh no, and this is crossing with the Barry one. Oh, this is a disaster. And that's crossing with nine down, which I haven't got right. I need to solve 17 and 19 across. Vengeful spirits, certainly associated with Hibernia. Oh. Furies, vengeful spirits, certainly. Associated with Hibernia. I think this is. I want this is. Is it the Erignes or something like that? Something like that, maybe. Erin, I think, is a word that can mean Hibernia. And certainly, if you say certainly to someone, you're saying yes. And I think. I don't know how to say Henry Erignes. It's one of those words that I know from crosswords, but I think I think they are from the Greek myths and they're furies or something. Oh, and actually that might be supported by this Y. Weren't there two Ys in the anagram fodder for only dry bran? Yeah, there were. Okay, well that's that's gives me some pause for hope. Cinders initially, I'm thinking C, the initial letter of the word cinders. Wearing shoe, okay, so it's trying to allude towards Cinderella. We ignore surface readings of the clue, they will not help us. Uh, so we need a sandal, scandal, yeah, okay. So we, we put that together relatively well. So what's this something, Barry Linden or something? Is that a, is that a literary character? It probably is and I just, my ignorance is not doesn't allow me to know who that is. ND and only anagrammed. So Lin Barry Linden, ND and lonely, that would be right. I mean, it, I, I was going to say it must be right. I'm not sure it must be right. I could well imagine it's not, but I don't know who Barry Linden is. Um, but if Barry Linden is a literary character, it <laughs> well done me. Um, now, what is this? 27s of a thought. Great Danes. Ah, there we go. Well done. Um, Self-praise is no praise, Simon. Um, okay, so this is a clue Mark would have got instantly. Mark has Danish ancestry, so we'll be familiar with whoever these people are, and I'm afraid I'm not. Um, but they are presumably great Danish people. And therefore, dogs and dogs of a sort, that was the bit of it that gave it to me, thank goodness. Now, this could be ugliness, it occurs to me now I get these checking letters. An unfair condition. If you're not fair looking, you're ugly. So let's try ugliness and see if we can justify it. Posh, we said, was you. Theatrical part in Gilbert and Sullivan. Ah, well, the theatrical part is the li you learn your lines, don't you? You learn your part. And that's in, when it's... See, I, see I'm, I'm doing what I tell you guys not to do. I'm, I'm seeing GNS and I'm seeing theatrical and my brain is immediately off in Iolanthe and, you know, the Pirates of Penzance. It shouldn't be. GNS is literally saying in the letters GNS, it has nothing to do with Gilbert and Sullivan. So G and S go around lines after posh U and we get ugliness and therefore I think we have solved the puzzle. Let's have a look. Ta da There we are. So that is how to solve today's time. So let's have a quick look to check. Uh, we could check how we pronounce it. Oh, okay. In the plural, it was a fury. I wasn't too far away. Um, Barry Linden, someone. In, oh, Ritardando. Let's have a look at that as well. Ritardando. There it is. It's there. Very straightforward, apparently, with diminishing speed. Um, is there anything else we should look up? Somebody can tell me who Barry Linden was in the comments. And that is, I think, oh, Kyromancer, we did check. Yeah, so although 
although it's an interesting puzzle because although it was i think probably easier than usual there were certainly areas as you saw where if your general knowledge wasn't quite deep enough you could just get stuck and you really i really had to rely on the wordplay lots of times but that's the great thing about cryptic crosswords they give you two chances so i hope that was useful let me know in the comments if you enjoy this sort of content um, if you do we'll keep it going obviously and we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.